Servus. Today I've got something special to share with you. I've been dabbling with a low budget loadout in Hunt Showdown, particularly focusing on not sacrificing that sweet long ammo capacity while keeping the costs down. It's all about finding that balance to stay competitive without emptying your wallet. First of all, grabbing a free hunter is a neat way to keep the costs low. Quite some people are already underestimating you when they see a tier 1 hunter. When it comes to the primary weapon, the debate usually circles around Sparks and Martini. Although Sparks has a higher damage of 149, Martini isn't trading far behind with a damage of 143 and a quicker cycle time of 3.5 seconds as opposed to Sparks 4.9 seconds. And you save $8 with a Martini only costing 122 hunt bucks. For the secondary, I've found the Colt for conversion pistol to be a more reliable body compared to the basic Nagan. It has a bit more punch and range, making it a solid choice to finish off what started. For 55 bucks, it's yours. By the way, both guns have a very powerful fanning mode. As you earn some extra bucks from your hunts, considering upgrading to FMJ for the conversion pistol could be a game changer, increasing the headshot range and reducing the damage drop off. Through walls, it works like a pocket after when fanning. And on range, it's basically a small uppercut. All that for $50 more. Another thing that needs to be tested, hitting your ranged enemies with that martini and while they are running for cover, you don't reload, but switch to explosive ammo and try to shoot behind the cover, killing them with their medkit in hand. This would be another $50. For tools, a knuckle knife for 15 bucks proves to be a good companion for those close encounters. And the medkit for 30 is essential for patching up. Tomahawks have their moments, but can be bucked quite often in terms of crosshair and retrieving them from corpses. So recently, I am experimenting with the $40 throwing knives for the silent grunt kills. A smart tool to bring to the bayou as a solo are the underestimated and with $30 fair priced decoy fuses. You can not only make enemies leave their cover, you can also interrupt the tree you push or at least force them to push from the side you want them to come from. On the consumables front, a small vid shot is budget friendly and tops a non-doctor medkit in terms of speed and health. As soon as you have Doctor, the small vid shots are your 20 bucks small heal. Having a small antidote shot for 30 hunt dollars on hand is always a good practice to survive those asshole traps. I also like to bring a $20 small rack shot for longer ranged encounters where you can take cover to heal up by just waiting. This loadout encourages smart play. Picking your battles, positioning wisely and understanding the strength and weaknesses of your weapons are key to making the most out of it. The Martini has a better reload speed than the Sparks, but it's still pretty long, so you better not get pushed before you have fanning for the conversion pistol at hand. In case of emergency, throw your decoys, make enemies run away or counter push with some fake dynamite. As you bag more bounties and earn extra cash, consider adding a free upgrades like the FMJ for the pistol, bigger consumables if you feel like you need them or even go for the wombo combo traps. For trades, I usually go for Doctor first, then Physician, Lightfoot and so on. But, and even though I hate fanning, it should be your very first choice on that loadout. Of course, Necro if you go in solo, but actually, your body's gonna get camped for minutes, trapped, burned and whatnot. So I personally refrain from using Necro too often. Alright, this low budget loadout is a solid choice for those looking to stay competitive in the ruthless environment of Hunt Showdown without going overboard on the expenses. It's a good starting point and as you grow your earnings you can tailor it with some neat upgrades to suit your playstyle. The entry point variant will cost you 362 Hunt Dollars. The special ammo one sits on 462 bucks. Still no budget killer if you ask me. So now it's your turn to try this loadout or tell me your favorite alternative to it. I've added some clips to show the Martini in action. Hope you enjoy. Until next time, happy fanning. They've heard me. Gotcha. Mm -hmm.
they were super ultra duper tactical. Look at that. Well, what can I say? In the end, ESL Pro Tactics worked and killed me. <laughs> I was getting too calm. Was close. Oh fuck. I need a gun? Oh I missed. Okay. Are they leaving?
Bingo! That's my team advantage. Let's change position. Let's try to get the upper hand here. It's very loud, but it's uh, unusual, so that can work. He's dead. Martini advantage. <laughs> That is the advantage of long ammo, to be honest. To get these kills after they have been downed once, without the need of going for the head. Almost got me there. So that's a classic, I guess. Probably I've hit the shoulder or the arm with the martini hit. Otherwise, she was running around with 7 HP. So any hit with a conversion pistol should have killed her, but it didn't. So I assume I hit arm or shoulder. And if I would have been using FMJ on the conversion pistol, I think there should be a possibility to penetrate the arm and hit the chest for chest damage, which would have killed her. So I think the problem here was not running FMJ on the conversion pistol, but running standard compact ammunition. And you can see here pretty pretty clearly that I am willing to take the shot of Mr. Sackface Man just to get the kill on her, but she was too fast in cover, so I couldn't find her anymore and I needed to retreat. What a pity. I think I killed her. No, I actually didn't. And you see, I was right. You will see that in the next screen. I hit her arm three times. The long ammo didn't penetrate because she was looking at me. And the conversion didn't penetrate the arm. I think because I was not using FMJ. And I think that's possible. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Another thing to mention here. How could I have won the round? Well, I've had a flash. I could 
actually just throw the flash over the top of the roof to flash them both and get maybe two easy kills. Another thing was I was not wrecked to 150 HP. This is why the conversion pistol actually was able to kill me. I could have also thought about throwing a decoy over the rooftop before peeking to make them panic. So a lot of options here, but I just chose to reload and peek the rooftop and get killed with a chest shot of the uppercut. So that's hunt, I guess. GG's.